Now, thanks for staying with us on politics tonight. We're looking at the CBN regulatory initiatives and the appreciation of, of the narrow. We've been speaking with um, a startup business lawyer and financial analyst, Omoi Dugiarek. Thanks for staying with us. Thank you for having me. So I was saying earlier that, look, Nigerians just, wants, just want to go back to buying um, commodities for as low as they used to. Uh, if not lower, at least let's just go back to what it was before, uh, because now it is quite high. Um, we see how the, the exchange rate has reduced, but it has not really taken effect, you know, as much on, on food prices. But the federal government has, has urged Nigerians to um, expect a stronger Naira. Um, they say that that will reflect on a significant drop in commodity prices as early as the uh, first quarter of 2025. Um, are you optimistic, and, and what will it take? discipline, focus, and the political will. Remember I said earlier that the issue of strengthening the Naira and its effect on the economy goes beyond CBN. Um, so there are a lot of, there are market forces, right? There are also, the, uh, the patriotism also comes to play, right? And I think that we will get to a stage where the economy, the, 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 the economists, right? Um, the regulators, government will do all that it should do. Then it will be left for you and I, the citizens, to now play our part. And what is that part? One of which is ensuring that we are patriotic. And so one of the things that we saw in the last three months, two to three months, is a dangerous price conflagration and everybody hiding behind mm. the dollar. Even the ones that are clearly unjustifiable. Mm. Right. And we also saw people who were hoarding uh, food, uh, and, and we saw how um, different, exactly. uh, um, different uh, agencies, security agencies, going to these warehouses exactly. to keep them open. Exactly. Right. So the, the Nigerian market, the average Nigerian businessman is largely a price speculator. If the Minister of Petroleum comes out today and says, oh, we're looking at uh, possibly adding a few 10 Nairas to petrol. Go out the next day, you see all the filling stations will be shut. Why? They are speculating. They want to make profits on what they have bought on old stock. And that's the average body language. So how will you address that? The political will to ensure that you're able to get people to do what they should do and not what they want to do. But you see, in leadership and in government, political will works, can be a double-edged sword. If those who are seeking to implement the policies of government do not show it in their actions, so government internal administration and policies must reflect that level of patriotism. So I want to see more government functionaries patronize made in Nigeria goods. I want to see government trainings and programs happen in Nigeria. I want to see them travel to Eboni, travel to Obudu, right? Even though I think you know, Obudu may, may not be what it used to be, right? But I want to see government invest locally. I want to see governors today ride made in Nigeria official cars. If you make that level of investment in local production, you are incentivizing patriotism by doing it. And you're showing, leading the way. Now, you must also know that what has made everybody tilt towards this foreign craze, for want of better language, is quality. Mm. Quality assurance has been a major problem, right? So what are the factors that have made indigenous producers continue to fall short of these quality expectations? Address those issues. And this is where I expect the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, Standard Organization of Nigeria, and other agencies are so required to work closely to bridge this quality. And there are, there are, there are brands, local brands, that are doing phenomenally well, right? I'm an entrepreneur, as much as I'm a lawyer. And one of the things that I see in interacting with entrepreneurs, I service startups, and so I work with a lot of businesses, both growing and you know, full-fledged. And one of the things I have seen is that low appetite for 
standardization for quality. And I always is say... There, is there enough regulation? Because we have a lot so, of regulation. So if you, regulated. Is it something... Is it, is it, is, is, it's not something that we really can regulate. It's something... It's a mindset. It's a mindset. Can it not be enforced? Because we have the standard organization of Nigeria. Um, there's also NAFDAQ for foods and drugs and all. But standard organization of Nigeria is general. And so can that not be enforced, even where the, the mindset is absent? So two things. The workforce, the civil service and the public workforce must now even understand global best practice and then insist on those measures. For instance, if you say to NAVDAQ, that product you approved three months, three years ago, when was the last time you checked their production? Right? Because, listen, I can give you the very best version of this because I want you to approve. Whether this is what I'm going to be selling to the end users is a different kettle of fish. So we need to now look at those in this. But you see, I think the work is more for the National Orientation Agency if we have one, because I don't see them. We must begin to reorientate and change the way we reason, right? Um, Look at the issue of different bands of power and, you know, the increase in, in power units. I like air condition a lot. I'm having to now switch off and switch on intermittently, right? Because of power consumption rates. But here's the thing. Is NAC following closely with the distribution companies to ensure that they are not ripping people mm, off? That these areas are actually getting the hours that you have said they will get. And that the categorization is proper in the circumstance, mm. right? Because what you're going to have is if people do not see that value, then you won't get them to align. And so it's the same thing across board. All right, so let's get back to the, the, the value of the, the, the Naira to the dollar. Um, people, it's dropping, we're seeing in an appreciation of the Naira, but how significant will that drop be? Some have said perhaps maybe we'll go back to the 700 naira it was before 750. Um, some people are expecting much more. Maybe it drops to maybe 500, 600. So some have said maybe 900. But what do you see? So we forget that we were once at a time when dollar was 150 naira. Mm. Can we get back there? It just takes intentional effort. If we boost exports and we reduce imports, you will see it happen. Listen, listen, imagine Nigeria bringing in revenue just the way oil brings in revenue. And remember that a lot of our revenue from oil is cut at source to service debts, to service foreign obligations and all that. And then you see what has been happening before the Cardozo policy came in. They, 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 they transport 100% of their profits out immediately. So nothing even stays, nothing is domiciled until we insisted that, okay, 50% must stay for 90 days, give us a 90-day window to give some buffer, right? We've seen our foreign reserves shoot up to $34 billion at the end of March. Now, the only way the Naira can become so strong is if we give oil a run for its revenue. So if you see importation, go out. FX coming in that number. There's no way. So it's 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 really um, it's as simple as ABC. Until we start exporting, we cannot expect the naira to come down to where it used to be. But if we start exporting, it will even go way lower because we will have more dollars than we need. Remember, what is inflation? Too much money looking for few goods. As far as Naira is concerned, Naira is weak because a lot of Naira is looking for little dollar. So if you have so much dollar, then you don't need too much Naira to look for it. What we've seen is a depletion of our reserves for exports, for imports. Whether direct in products import or human uh, uh, um, 
tourism, uh, health care, and all these things. Now, if we begin to demystify those factors, and that's why I said, look, it's beyond CBM. Fix our road network. If we have arable roads, people will start looking at having vacations locally. Mm. If you fix the issue of security, there are places in this country that are made for folklore. What really, I've traveled far and wide, right? What really is there? Code. You have freezes, you know, and all that, right? Well, we do not have snow, yeah, so... <laughs> you know, but the, the, the point is, the point is, fix this country. And you find that not many people have that, that, appetite. that appetite for foreign travel. Fix healthcare. Our healthcare indices is still at its at a very low ebb. Improve. Listen, if you go abroad, you would find that Nigerian human resource capital is the fulcrum mm -hmm. upon which many institutions abroad stand. Our talents are everywhere. In fact, the level of human, human export in the tech and innovation ecosystem is a lot. That's my field. And even the health. And then you look at health. It's a lot. Fix the system, incentivize them by paying them salaries that are good enough. And then you find that many people will stay. You find that this drain will reduce because a lot of them are not necessarily very happy. Fix public education. I always say, look, Nigeria's biggest challenge is the failure of a social safety net. And what really forms that social safety net? Education, health care, housing. If you fix, I went to a public school, right? And it was the best at the time. But I'm almost going to say, that I would never send any of my children there. It shouldn't be that way. Right? Fix public uh, uh, schools. When you fix public education, you make education accessible. Invest heavily in public education. Invest heavily in our institutions. And then you see, also, one of the problems we have, especially in the tertiary space, is that the level of investment that should go into education is not getting to the source. And so there is just a, 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 a cosmetic effect. But when you fix that, fix healthcare, people should be able to go into the hospital to get qualitative healthcare. Power is a key factor. There's light to power the machines, to power the equipment. Mm -hmm. Then there's housing. Once people know that in 35 years of my service, I can afford a two-bedroom bungalow, a three-bedroom bungalow. Listen, the corruption that kills this country is the corruption of greed. It's, it's the corruption of need, sorry. Which is the corruption necessitated by these social safety nets being unavailable. That of greed that we see, 30 billion, 50 billion, 100 billion, really, is a microcosm of the corruption in the ministry, the corruption at the checkpoints, the corruption in certain places, the corruption of survival, because there is no social safety net. When you fix these things, you incentivize the local economy, you incentivize the country, and you reduce that appetite for foreign travel. But what does this also say about governance at, at the state level? Because even with the, with the uh, foreign exchange that we saw, some governors were also being, being you know, accused of, of being part of, of that problem. Uh, where, you know, after allocation, or, you know, and then with the increase in allocation because of removal of petrol subsidy, they had more money to convert to, to dollars. I mean, there was that accusation allegations against some governors. Uh, so what does that also say about governance at that level? So you see, the problem we have, is that of regulation. In a sane climb, if you convert one billion naira to dollars, it will ring a bell somewhere. And there's some, some level of accountability should be uh, uh, demanded. 
But we sit here and we see these things happen like nothing has happened. And until regulators step up, right? Until we set, put in place systems that checkmate these things, they will continue to happen. And you see, like I said, it's, a, it's, not, it's, it's not just CBN to do. Who are those implementing? Are the foot soldiers in the same place? These monies that are released to these governors are released to banks. The banks owe a, an accountability burden to the regulator. Some of these things are easy to be flagged. So that's a factor that, 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 that should be addressed. But you see, the main failure here is the failure of our local government system. Do you know your local government chairman? Do you know your, your, your councillor? These are supposed to be the people who should bring democracy to your doorstep. It's literally non-existent. Every local government chairman today is in the pocket of his governor. And so does the bidding of the government. Meanwhile, it was supposed to be a level of government that was independent. And that's why you had state independent electoral commissions to hold elections. In some states today, they don't even hold elections. You have executive secretaries, Ketikar chairman, sole administrators, or whatever the governors choose to call. The, 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 every, every month, right? I know Okonjo Wala started it. They release um, how much they have shared monthly. It's in the papers. The monies that go to the local government, who holds them accountable? How, do they, how is that money disbursed? How is it shared? How is it allocated? Right? Because democracy should come. So everybody is calling... Tinubu, 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 Tinubu. Who is calling their local government chairman? Do they even know their chairman? The pothole in front of your house, you see it, you feel bad, you call the president. After you forget a, that after you have, you have a council. Monies have, have been sent in terms, in, you know, in form of allocation to your, to your governor to take care of you. To your so, governor? To, 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 to your local government, and to your local chairman. government to take care of you. So yeah. it should no longer the focus should no longer be at the center. But I also wanted to ask you, um, even as we, we wind. But the down, center has a responsibility. Uh, absolutely, the center has a responsibility absolutely. to rein everyone in. We we see how uh, so rather we've seen the increase in commodity prices. I, I just want to go back there. Um, we've see, also seen now that the appreciation of the naira. How soon some prices have dropped um, significantly, but some others have just stayed where they are. Um, some, in fact, some have even increased, and you're wondering what's going on. How soon should we begin to see that drop in prices? So, so we expect that within the next one month. So a lot of these things are importation based. So the average businessman will tell you, I have imported products to last me six months mm. at this price. Mm. So until I sell off, I cannot change. And really, it's very difficult to gauge and confirm that. And that's why I tell you, that's where patriotism comes in, right? But for the main things, the mainstay for us, which is really, the people watching on TV want to know when rice will be cheaper, right? When gari will Absolutely. be cheaper, when vegetable, tomato, and all that. These things should be able to come down within the next two to three weeks because that cost should have come down. Now, what, is, what are the costs? The transportation costs, the logistics supply chain right and all these things should have come down now if it's for government's duty that's why i said a price standardization approach is very important and i've always said this this will be like the 10 time i'm saying this on tv government has got to work closely now the one of the most regulated I industries is the informal sector they're very regulated if if they increase the cost of rice in this place by the time you get to the market down the road same has been done. They have Absolutely. their way of passing that information. Absolutely. Work with their leaders, right, to push these, these uh, mm. prices down. And then patriotism, really. It My comes friend, down to we, do ha we do have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your analysis. I'm um, always a pleasure. Omori Yodugiaro, a startup business lawyer and financial Thank you analyst. For having Thanks me. for joining us. Thank you for having me. And that marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Um, get in touch with us on um, X at TVC News NG. We're also on Instagram 
um, at TVC News NG and on Facebook as well. Um, on YouTube, we are live at TVC News Nigeria. Thanks for watching. I am Precious.